This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the new Full Battle Rattle Studios. Um, such a supporter and a proponent of sports for girls, uh, well, for the, the, every kid in school, but I want girls to be involved and to learn those lessons of self-discipline and teamwork and setting goals and working extremely hard knowing that anything is possible. I'm a huge proponent of sports. This week, the Palin Update is just a little bit brighter as we focus on GLOW. Yep, that GLOW. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, the amazing all-women wrestling league from the 80s. In the headlines again, as a new Netflix show based on GLOW is now out. This, after the 2012 film GLOW, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, put these athletes back in the spotlight. Now, a whole new buzz is there for these intriguing American wrestlers. Today, one of the greats of GLOW joins us. Roxy Astor is here to talk about her days in the ring, the GLOW movie, and the new show. Plus, after GLOW, a chance for fans to meet their favorite wrestlers. Stay tuned as the Palin Update climbs into the ring for a can't-miss edition of the program. Plus, we'll have the latest national and Alaska headlines in Sarah Palin News. We'll visit the Crow's Nest with Tanya Crow in California. And a brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert is coming up from Texas. Kelly Carlson is on assignment. No on target this week. Looking forward to Kelly's return. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio, available at mamagrizzlyradio.com and now available at sarahpalin.com by clicking the More tab. The Palin Update is sponsored by Full Battle Rattle. Full Battle Rattle, helping veterans suffering from combat-related disabilities through the healing power of music. Learn more at facebook.com slash fullbattlerattleabq. The syndicated GLOW TV show was produced for just four seasons, 1986 through 1990, in Las Vegas. And the All-Women's Wrestling League took the nation by storm. Fans loved it, from frat boys and wrestling fans to... Women, kids, and really everybody. These wrestlers just captivated America. Then, when it was more popular than ever, GLOW just ended without warning. Today, we talked to Roxy Astor, a GLOW superstar, about the iconic league and about the GLOW resurgence. The women were featured in a movie in 2012, a documentary about GLOW. And now, a new TV series based on GLOW has hit Netflix in 2017. Plus, Roxy is a big part of Afterglow, bringing fans up close and personal with the wrestlers they admire. This should be a great one. And right now, we welcome in a great one, one of the best GLOW wrestlers of all time, Roxy Astor. Roxy, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing well, and it's... It's uh, really a pleasure to have you here. You know, uh, Governor Palin always uses the phrase "fight like a girl," uh, talking about politics and you know fighting for your children and fighting in your regular life. But you know, I know some uh, ladies in the '80s who really fought like girls, and it was some of the greatest stuff I ever saw as a 12-year-old uh, or however old I was when it started. And uh, it, it's really a pleasure to talk to you. And, and first of all, thank you for Glow. It was it was great for the fans. Well, thank you. And you think we fought like girls? I think we fought tougher than girls. Well, I, the point is, <laughs> girls are tougher. Yeah. No, you fought like girls yeah. in a good way. You got it. And, you know, yeah. some of the greatest matches, I think, that people remember it involved you. You against Hollywood and, and, and some others. You, you know, you were one of the best ones in there in the ring. Um, did you have a background uh, going into GLOW? Or was this a casting call that took uh, you by surprise, too? Uh, yeah, this well, no, not a casting uh, surprise, but uh, it was uh, on TV. I was watching Glow, and I used to—I was a Glow fan, and they were looking for for wrestlers because I guess season one and two girls walked out of the show. Oh, so okay, so I you think, went that Yeah, route. Matt Thimber was. Yeah, it was just kind of a, just a random thing that you know I was a hairdresser from <laughs> Seattle, drove my car out here, drove my car out here, and saw saw the show, and then I end up in Vegas, like a week later. So that's how it all started. Now, I know for the fans it was shocking how things were just picking up and really becoming popular, and then it just kind of disappeared. And so that must have been tough for you as the wrestlers. Well, the story on that is I left before, like, the like the fourth, I think right before the fourth season, but I was expecting to come back and do the movie. Uh, Matt Simber, uh, I guess they were working on this script, and it was supposed to be really good. So I left because I had a, a child. I had a baby. So 
his name is Dylan. He's 28 now. That makes me feel very old. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so I figured, you know what, I would have uh, my son get back in shape. And then, you know, uh, there was the movie. And I remember filming something in Oxnard. And I was six weeks pregnant. It was uh, Rox was finally getting her skit. After two seasons, Tiffany had her skit. And Roxy was finally getting her Rocky where I was a boxer. And I finally got it. And Matt Zimber made me run around the building. I was like six weeks pregnant and really sick to my stomach. <laughs> and after that, I'm like, okay, where's, what's going on? And it's just nothing. Uh, we kept checking with, uh, you know, you only had the telephone. You didn't have the internet. You didn't have like access. You had the phone that you picked up. So, uh, you know. We didn't know. I just kind of waited and just nothing happened. So I just went on with my life and, and you know, kind of kept in contact with the girls here and there. And, you know, then we had to end up having the documentary. And Facebook. Facebook has really helped a lot of us right. connect and, with each other. And in that documentary in 2012, one of the things that was touched on was the, that possibly the ending was because the funding wasn't coming in anymore, that perhaps uh, the actress Pia Zadora had a hand in that. Is it any truth to that? Oh, gosh. There are so many stories. It's one of the. Yeah, I remember um, somebody was saying, I hear different stories from different girls. So it's kind of weird. They all have their own ending to it. Uh, Rick List, it was. Um, no, he has said, okay, you pick the Glow Girls or you pick me. So if you're married to a billionaire and you've got a couple kids, you know, you're going to pick your wife. So that's just one one part that I heard. Okay. And um, Her husband, he was the main funder. Uh, he, was, he was the main funder. So, you know, and that's just one story. Do I know 100%? No, I don't really know. There's still like a lot of mystery clouds over this whole Glow thing. And that, to me, that's the whole mystery of Glow. And the ending of Glow, nobody was quite finished with it. It's like we didn't have that proper ending. <laughs> and, and now, years later, here you are back in the headlines. Uh, people are checking out the documentary again, even though that's a few years old now. But uh, because of the Netflix show, uh, a, a drama, it's not based on, uh, you know, it's based on the show. None of the Glow Girls are in it, but it's giving you uh, more coverage again. And people are looking up the actual Glow wrestler. So, uh How's that been, mm -hmm. and, and what do you think of the fact that there's a show based on what you did years ago? Okay, and I, I want to let you know this, too. I just watched all 10 episodes for you. <laughs> I just watched them today. Uh, but we're going to back up a little, a little bit. We had um, the documentary, the Glow documentary. That was 2012, and I actually did the Afterglow fan party three years ago and got 11 Glow Girls together and did a DVD. So I've kind of had something in the works for three years. So I've created like an afterglow buzz. So I think this buzz, because the documentary is kind of dormant. Nobody was really talking about it until the afterglow and the fans and everybody started talking about afterglow and glow and YouTube. And then the glow girls started connecting with their fans on, on Facebook. And just kind of this thing's been growing for the last three years. And I told you that we have a cruise coming up, and this will be our third cruise. So on the Netflix thing now, um, I don't know. There's some disappointment. And, and you know what? I was a fan of Jenji Cohen, and I'm going to say was. I wasn't, uh, you know, I watch Weeds. I watch Orange the New Black. And I expected something for that, uh, you know, the budget and everything. And so, like, you could have done so much more with it. And I'm saying this because I just saw all 10 episodes. Mm -hmm. I expected a lot more. You had a good cast. Uh, wasn't, I didn't love Allison Brie. I liked uh, the Betty Gilpin who played on Nurse Jackie, Mark Marone. He was a coked out uh, director, which is so untrue of our director. So my, my big thing that I have with this, is okay so i watched it and there were so many similarities to what was going on they kind of combined a, a couple characters right and the thing is why use the name the gorgeous ladies of wrestling i'll be honest when they were announcing the gorgeous ladies of wrestling i don't know that was kind of like a, a ping in the heart like why why couldn't they have used another name and just gone that route of, of just women wrestling. I mean, if Jindy Cohen and her writers have like these great minds, come up with something. Don't grab, 
from us and not give us, you know, anything. Like right. So if, if you like everyone would anything. know, everyone would know what it was based on, but you'd have a fictitious title because you're not following it to the script. I mean, if you do a story on Babe Ruth and you call him Babe Ruth, you think the story's really about Babe Ruth. If you want to make it just about some ball, great ball player, you'd give him a different name. So I, I see what you're saying. Okay, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, <laughs> you make the duck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you know, the good so, news is that, you know, uh-huh. no matter what the show uh, brings, uh, this is bringing attention to the real Glow wrestlers. And I want to go back to Afterglow and, and talk about, you know, the great mm-hmm. success you, you've had there. And uh, t- tell people a little more about exactly what it is and about that cruise that's coming up, because that sounds great. <laughs> Okay, the afterglow was it was something I came up with after uh, I saw you know, like on Facebook and the documentary how we kind of had this magic still. And after thirty years, and I kind of based it on a league of their own, you know, the baseball with Madonna and um, remember that that mm-hmm. movie? Yeah, sure. Where Great they, they movie. kind of all reminisce back and yep. like you know they were all older, and that was kind of like my dream. Like we can all look back, and the thing is, we still have most of these girls around and that is so rare with so many things going on so I thought let's get these girls together and there are stories that needed to be told from the girls so it did start out as one show and then our first cruise that we went on was out of Long Beach it was just a three-day uh like a little trial cruise and it was a smash people loved it it was great they wanted more in fact I did not know I was going to do another cruise until the day before Okay, now the last cruise we had, we it was at a New Orleans two weeks before the Mardi Gras, and that was great just to even be in New Orleans, and that went to the Caribbean. And once again, I did not know until the day before that I was going to do another cruise because there's just something when you get like these glow girls, you get Eileen MTV, Hollywood Lightning, Debbie Dallas, Angel, Gremlina, Sunny. Uh, I mean, all these girls are so good with the fans, and that's what it's about. The girls that are picked for this cruise are the ones that actually interact and enjoy being with the fans. And there are there's no other group of girls like this, nor will there be. Now, we have another cruise. It's uh, March 4th to the 11th, leaving uh, 2018, leaving out of New York to uh, Bahamas. And the website? You want me to give that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's www.afterglowatsea.com. And and what people can expect out of this cruise is actually interacting with the glow girls. These are glow girls that they just don't like sit in their room and like, hey, here's my appearance. They're actually interacting, having fun. And there's going to be another stage show like the first Afterglow. So I think this will be the third Afterglow, one, two, yeah, this will be the third Afterglow, which is the live stage show where we have the the fan hot seat, which is a favorite. And uh, we're doing a masquerade uh, theme type uh, party because we're leaving out of New York. So it's kind of like a fan-y type thing and a few surprises that I can't say yet. But (laughs) the prices are really, really good. Like for a week, you get a free drink package. Um, Even if you don't drink, there's other things you can get. So People have not been disappointed. Um, did you know that the girls got uh, the Glow Girls got an award at the CAC recently in Vegas? Yes, and, and, you, and you were and you were there, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the Glow Girls got that to get. Uh, it was Patricia Summerlin. She plays Sunny. So after the last cruise, she came back, got that together for eight months, and then we all got our award, and that was that was really good because we got like I think twenty one Glow Girls together. Well, so that was a good reunion. You, you deserve it. I mean, people who don't know about it, you know, are learning now. But those who saw it, mm-hmm. you know, when it happened, I mean, there was nothing quite like it. And, you know, and all women, you know, women's wrestling was, you know, was a novelty. It had fabulous moolah. You had a match here and there once in a while. And now you see how mm-hmm. women's wrestling has taken off in the WWE and, and everywhere else. Oh, but, yeah. But great. the way that you were all women and the product, I mean, just the colors of the ropes and the ring, the presentation, the funny sketches. I mean, it's something that uh, those of us who saw it firsthand are just enjoying looking back at. And those who haven't mm-hmm. seen it yet, I, you're going to have a whole new bunch of fans, as I'm sure you already have realized. Yeah. And I have to say, yeah, that's a good thing about this Glow Netflix because obviously we don't have the $20 million dollar budget so we're only going to rely on 
I guess there's an app out, a Snapchat app, uh, Glow, and there's T-shirts. And so people are looking out. So, you know, something will happen in the future for the Glow Girls. Just remember that. But it's going to be the After Glow Girls. Just remember I said that. <laughs> well, that is cool, Roxy. We're going to hold you to that. We're uh-huh. going to talk about that, too, yep. as we move forward. And we yep. appreciate you joining us. And, uh, you know, you, you should be proud of what you did. And you know what I, I, I like about the Glow Girls and I've talked to some of your colleagues about this too, uh, mm-hmm. that most of you seem to be very happy and seem to really like what you did, proud of what you did. Um, I, you know, a lot of, most of you with the younger ones are in good health. I mean, that, that's really great to, to see because you don't see that everywhere when you hear stories about something that happened a while back. And I think it's really a, a feel good story more than anything else that you, you'd. Well, I mean, no. Hey, but there's a feel-good part of it, and some of us do look great. But I'm sorry, last night when I had the glow party, and and I have to say this, Matilda the Hun was here. Well, do you know who that is? Sure, Matilda I mean Matilda the Hun, the yeah, legend. Sure, and she's okay, older, she's and we know singing, about her health. Yeah, yeah. With I mean, she's singing raw meat, and she put so much life into this this song. And I'm like, she's 68 years old, but she's still so full of life, and she loves her glow band, and she lights up when she when she does that. But like I said, it's amazing that all of us are in, in decent health and that we're, we're good and, you know, and we're happy that we were a part of GLOW. I have no regrets, and I have to say it was probably the, one of the best time besides my kids, the best time in my life because it was something where I just felt like this is where I needed to be. Listen, we you were know. we were middle schoolers, and then uh, toward the end, I guess high schoolers watching you, and uh, you know, people would ask you about wrestling, and yeah, we'd talk about the WWF, but the conversation would a lot a lot of times head toward Glow. It, it was it was that big of a deal for us. It really was. Yeah, you told me you were twelve years old. So. Yeah, yeah, I think for the first <laughs> season. Yeah, I think we were twelve for the first season. And uh, listen, I, I'm telling many friends that I, lifelong friends that I still talk to that you know that we're going to talk to you and have you on the show because uh, yeah, hey, they remember it. They remember it. we we reference it. We've referenced it for years. And you know, it's funny you bring up Matilda the Hunt. Oh, really? She was one of the real uh, you know characters that everybody remembers, of course. And oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it never yeah. got out of our stream of consciousness. No way. It was it well, was a big uh, part. Yeah, Matt Simber would always say it was the water cool cooler uh, talk, like you would talk about at the water cooler. Yeah. But in your instance, it would be the the drinking fountain at your yeah. school. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. The cafeteria table. It absolutely yeah, so was. That's, yeah. So and, you know, since you were that young, <laughs> you know, growing up in the New York suburbs, I mean, we're we had you know the Mets and Yankees were both great, and we had a lot of baseball and other things to talk about. But Glow was right there. I mean, we were watching you just like we were with the same fervor that we were watching the NFL or baseball or everything else, and uh, it's appreciated, Roxy. And thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me. Any any glow talk, I'm here. <laughs> for more information on Roxy and to find out about the Glow Cruise, where you can set sail with the wrestlers, visit afterglowatsea.com. That's afterglowatsea.com. Now it's time for Sarah Palin News Headlines and more about Governor Palin. Governor Palin wants answers after a school edits Trump shirts and pro-Trump comments out of their yearbook. The Suck It Up Cupcake design available until the end of the month now, so don't miss out. When you purchase yours today, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to Operation Heal Our Patriots. Get yours at merchful.com slash Sarah Palin. True sickos continue to attack the president's young son. Summing it up perfectly, it's been the liberal left engaging in shenanigans with Russia that's put our safety in jeopardy, not Trump. While the Golden State whiners continue to cry for attention, Clemson football visits the White House. Meantime, the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion Pittsburgh Penguins make their White House plans known. Roseanne has some huge news, and Sarah Palin loves it. Palin wishes President Trump a happy birthday. Flag Day thoughts from Palin. Palin weighs in on the congressional baseball shooting and takes on the crooked New York Times for their latest lies. Happy 242nd birthday to the U.S. Army. Dennis Rodman back in North Korea. Inspiring Trigg takes the plunge. Palin reiterates common sense, saying the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy or gal with a gun. From Nirvana to Green Beret. 
And big thanks to Governor Palin for highlighting my article on Albert Guillory. You can check it out on the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page or at sarahpalin.com. To read about all of these stories, visit the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety and to read her devotionals, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page. Follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. And don't miss the news, sarahpalin.com. Now let's head to the crow's nest. Here's Tanya Crow. Thanks, Kevin. This week really led me to want to target and speak about the media. And this country has given the press and journalism and journalists a very huge responsibility to report the news, the facts, what's going on, Mm -hmm. keeping us in the loop on the need for a press and certain people to be given certain privileges and that responsibility and that control and that power has been so badly abused it's a disgrace and i wanted to look at a very specific tool or i'm gonna also be so bold to call it a weapon since they are using it against us, the people, or when it comes to the Trump presidency. And that weaponry or that tool is implication. The conclusion that could be drawn from something, although it is not explicitly stated, the action or state of being involved in something. Um, The synonyms are suggestion, insinuation, innuendo, hint, intimation, and I want to look at a very specific synonym called imputation. The definition of imputation is the attributing of actions to a source. Imputation takes words or actions and ties them to a person or a cause. And this, in my opinion, is very specifically what has been done by the mainstream media and when you have that kind of reporting it becomes very clear how out of whack and out of balance this entire part of our system of our democracy is and that it has to be rectified for the sake of our citizens and putting us as a country back on course because this amazing experiment that this country was founded on giving the people the most power possible in governing their own lives, it feels so good to have those reins back into the hands of an administration that cares about that, that wants to see the fruits of the labors of our founders once again thriving and flourishing and continuing to make this country the best country that this planet has to offer. And I want to leave the last note letting the media know we've got your number and truth and justice will prevail. Till next week, this is Tanya Crow with Mama Grizzly Radio. Tanya Crow on Mama Grizzly Radio. More from the Crow's Nest next week. Now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. How can we make sense of the Comey testimony this week? I'm still going through it, reading everything I can, listening, hearing, reading what he said in his testimony. But more importantly, I think he's lost just about all the dignity he has left, and he should probably just take that Trump pink slip and head off into the retirement sunset. What I found interesting and and particularly galling was that Comey was complaining about Trump expecting loyalty from him. Loyalty from an employee happens every day in American business. So inside the Beltway elites, excuse me, let me have your attention, please. This is what business leaders do. 
they have high expectations, especially from executives. They ask for loyalty. They ask for people to produce things, whether it's services or products. Obviously, James Comey failed on that level. And by the way, just so we're clear about the man that James Comey is, not only is he a leaker, but if you look at what he has tried to do to really set up President Trump by all of this little fake hoax news and this hearing, this actually follows Comey's pattern. He did the same thing, setting up Martha Stewart. Yes, James Comey was behind little Miss Martha going to jail. Secretly, I'll bet she's rooting for Trump because she knows exactly what kind of garden variety snake James Comey is. On that level just from law enforcement. My husband's perspective, he's a law enforcement professional. James Comey is a complete disgrace to the law enforcement profession in this country. He failed at every level just to comply with his basic job, such as declaring on his own, setting up the case why Hillary was guilty and declaring on his own she didn't need to be investigated. So Trump had every reason if, in fact, he did question Comey's loyalties because we don't know where those are, probably to Obama or Hillary or to Bill. We don't know. But James Comey's loyalty certainly wasn't to the American people. If anything, right now, James Comey should be apologizing and begging forgiveness to the law enforcement profession nationwide, whose people Those law enforcement guys and gals, they put their lives on the line every day to arrest the scummy lawbreakers and to put the bad people behind in jail and to help Americans be safer as a result. I just, I, I just can't stand it between the leaking, the groveling, the sniveling and the complaining. Every single American should be outraged by the fact that Democrats and Republicans think holding a hearing over nothing is acceptable. These hearings waste time and money of the American people. So what I'd like to know now that we found out Comey's a leaker and a law enforcement disgrace, uh, what's going on with revamping the tax system, lowering taxes? Where's the Senate on repealing Obamacare? How are these guys getting the job done for the American people? It's time to stop the foolishness. There was no Russian hacking. Folks, this is all about the fact that Donald Trump is now the president. Deal with it. He won. You lost. And I, as I recall in 2008, then-President-elect Obama said, elections have consequences. So turnabout is fair play, right? Elections have consequences. The people want their taxes lowered dramatically, boldly. We want the full repeal of Obamacare. We want to eliminate job-killing regulations. We want them repealed. We want the alphabet agencies that are unconstitutional done away with. Why is this so hard to understand? Because James Comey, actually, he's another hack. Obama didn't operate on his own. People were manipulating him, telling him what to do. Comey, he's not operating on his own. He is doing the deep state bidding to cripple the Trump administration. Mark Levin hit the nail on the head this week, talking about that the Comey ruse is finally unraveling. The deep state is continuing to unravel, and the media will use almost anything they can to try to undermine and destroy the Trump agenda. The bigger question is, why would the Democrats do that? Why would the Democrats and rhino Republicans want to thwart the will of the American people after such a historic election? Because the Democrats and the rhinos don't really care about the people. They only care about their money, power, and influence to control the people. Bernie Sanders' anger this week toward a Christian testifying in a Senate committee was despicable. But alas, the Democrats continue their downward spiral as they are barely able to hold themselves together because their decades of power and control over the people are quickly coming to an end. They really thought we were stupid. They really thought they had us. They believed they were so close to getting everything they wanted to fundamentally transform America. What they didn't count on was the will of the American people and the fact we voted Donald Trump as our next president. If anything, this outrage needs to now be focused on the Democrat Party and the failing Republican Party on Capitol Hill. Isn't it odd the eerie silence 
of Republican leaders to go after Democrats? Isn't it eerily silent that nobody is saying, we are sick and tired of this. We are moving forward on a bold, aggressive agenda to unleash the American entrepreneur and American business to make our country great again? Ha! Huh. This is what I love about working with the Convention of States Project, because while the inside the Beltway hoaxes and whining are going on by the ruling elite, the people are working. There's two 2.2 million of us working behind the scenes in our states, educating people and legislators as to the constitutional opportunity in Article 5 to fix the federal government once and for all. Our goal right now is to sign up 10 million voters. So if all 2 million of those voters took part in our 5 for 5 campaign, by the end of the year, we would have a massive people's footprint on D.C. with 10 million volunteers. Not only could we crush the swamp, but as Tom Coburn says, it isn't enough to drain the swamp. We need to muzzle the alligators. And that's exactly what we intend on doing. Join the Swamp Raiders at conventionofstates.com today and ask five friends to be part of the 5 for 5 campaign so we can take our power back from D.C. I want to know what you think. Tweet me this week at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizz Radio. It is time to reassert our power and flex that liberty muscle and muzzle the alligators once and for all. I'm Tamara Colbert from Mama Grizzly Radio. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy, On Target, and The Crow's Nest is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also available at sarahpalin.com by clicking the More tab. Like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, at Tanya Yoga 13, and at FBR ABQ. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to breitbart.com slash columnists slash Kevin hyphen Shola. I'm also contributing to sarahpalin.com. Please check out my latest piece this week. Visit sarahpalin.com slash author slash Kevin hyphen Shola. So honored to be working on the governor's new site. I want to thank Tamara Colbert, Tanya Crow, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Looking forward to Kelly Carlson's return. And thanks so much to Roxy Astor. And thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Full Battle Rattle. Visit facebook.com slash fullbattlerattle. A. B. Q. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, and Laurie Ann Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update right here on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.